So the reason he's put the line here is so that you remember which was which number and they don't go. I was line. teaching ninth graders math in a school. Bob was teaching Harvard freshman oh, math. And the only thing that they knew they knew about math was that they didn't like it, that it was scary and unpleasant, and they had to do it. it it's as if one, were, one found oneself in a country where people didn't listen to or hated music, and you were a musician, and you said, well, how can it be that this most beautiful of the arts is something that people are afraid of or, or bored by? You, you've, you've got to find a way of having them discover its beauties. This is the situation that math is in, in America, in the West, in the world, and has long been in. If you're someone who's not comfortable with math yourself, it's easy to rely on the textbook and say, okay, kids, we're all gonna read the material of chapter one together and do these 50 problems at the end. I like problems that are challenging, and I'm not the kind of person who, who likes to do multiplication tables over and over again. Math circles uh, are a binding force to put together parents, teachers, professors and students to work for a common goal, which is to make mathematics more popular and to make people love mathematics. The math circle is an activity outside the schools where kids can get passionate about mathematics. Kids that go to math circle learn about how to reason through an argument. Why is something true? They learn to question. They learn not to be afraid to make a guess and then to explore the guess, uh, to develop intuition and explore when it's wrong and to get delight in that. The mathematical circles are led by people who love mathematics, who know about it, and who want to show its significance, its depth, and its beauty to young people. On this film, you'll see several different teachers and three different math circles with very different styles. In Cambridge, Massachusetts, you see people working with some very young kids as well as older ones and working in a very open, exploratory style. In the Berkeley math circle, the kids are in middle school and high school and are working with advanced or even research level problems. Some of the kids are excited about Olympiad competitions and have been very successful. In San Francisco, you'll see a circle working in a kind of intermediate style. It's a place where you don't, where you don't have to be right always. So you can just be wrong, and it can lead you to the right answer. How many 56 and a half? Um, uh... It's the problem that's interesting. Can you tile a rectangle with non-congruent squares? Gosh, I don't know. Which rectangle did you have in mind? What do you mean by non-congruent? What are squares? What's a rectangle? Could you put the tiles in sideways? Does the problem generalize to three or higher dimensions? Give me anything whatsoever and I will show you the connection with mathematics. Everything is connected to mathematics. What geometric transformation is going on when I transform this into that. The teachers basically would just give us a question and let us go, give us gentle nudging every once in a while to make sure that we got there eventually. He kind of hint, gives us little hints and sort of pokes us in the right direction if we get really lost, but basically lets us find out stuff for ourselves. And now why is that equal to A? Um, parallel lines, it's right here. Ah, oh, okay, Alternator. good, okay, so that's also A. The problem's not gonna be solved in 10 seconds, that it might take patience and time and some of them you might not solve the first time and you might come back to them the next year or five years later and learn something new from looking back at those same problems. And I think that's something that if you're a novelist, you can use that skill just as much as if you're a mathematician or an engineer. Seeing children solve complex mathematical problems that I could not even understand for myself was, was really refreshing and made me think that if we were able to have programs like this, it would absolutely improve our math scores academically, which everyone's always talking about, and really just encourage kids to pursue careers that they would never otherwise have even considered possible. They come home liking mathematics, they enjoy it, they want to bring their friends, uh, they want to do mathematics. It brought back his um, enthusiasm for learning. The trial and error methods, the outside the box intuitions that Math Circle taught me are helping me a lot in my math classes here. The things in math circle relate to the things in school, and since they're harder, 
then I know the thing is in school better. 42. 42! And that is 42 56s. Wow, fantastic. And they said it couldn't be done. Math circles are problem oriented. They teach kids to think about problems on their own and get away from just following the drill, following the exercise book. I start with a very hard problem usually, very non-trivial, uh, put on the board. And usually no one can solve it until we get to the end of the session. And then you see a completely changed attitude towards the problem. Students are empowered with the techniques. They can attack it. You can cancel LC and LB and DM and EM. Why? Because they're opposite. Yes, but I need some operation to cancel them. Add them? Yeah, that's right. So and all of a sudden, the solution pops out. And some students emit the sound, wow, at the end of the lecture, I can do it. This is actually doable. Math circles give students the experience of focusing on a hard problem over a period of time, not giving up when they hit an obstacle, but really keeping at it until they overcome the obstacle. We could spend a semester just trying to figure out the answer to one problem, and it meant that we could really we could go into detail. It meant we could take side paths. If we suddenly leapt onto something that seemed more interesting, we could sort of take a diversion briefly. Our goal is not to show them yet another skill. Our goal is to make them think, to teach them how to think. And it, it, it is incredible what, what can be achieved by a person who, who can think. Logic problems are probably my favorite because, because some of the times they involve some sort of trick. You can solve them by algebra or just by a simpler way, and it's really fun to find that way. It turns out that these two segments are perpendicular and actually of equal length. The math circle sort of got me interested in that more abstract, the beauty side of math more than just the, oh, it's numbers and we can count side. And I think when people don't get exposed to the more beautiful side, that's when they lose interest. I personally feel that math is wired into my brain and it sort of really affects how I think all the time. And I think it's a very useful kind of wiring to have in your brain. Um, so I want to give them the chance to get some of this wiring and also to ex experience it so that they know what it feels like so then they can go and pursue it some more. They're being steeped in the culture of mathematics. They're being um, introduced to lots of just how the joy of mathematics. And that's what being a mathematician is all about, taking joy in it. And in some ways, the kids are mathematicians, right? They're already mathematicians by the time they, just by participating in the program. Whatever they're good at, you want to make it possible for them to be better at it and, and, and inspire them. And that's something we can do with math circles, and certainly do with, with mathematics. Good for you. So I think the benefit to society is simply bringing the best out of these kids. I don't, I, I don't see any doubt about that.